In the groove, when your cup seems too much With the worst yet to come, I was on your mind On the cross, as the crowds cursed your name Heaven's eyes turned away, stay far of me I know you love me so
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Why don't we come in and... Cool. Come in and grab a seat, grab a drink. It is so good to have you here this morning at church. We are excited about this morning's service. And we trust that you're going to have a, a blessed time with us this morning as we gather to be in the presence of God, be in the company of each other, and just to celebrate our amazing young people. Yeah? Give them a round of applause before we even start. Come on. They're so good. They're so good. Now, hopefully, for the benefit of the people who set it up, you've noticed we've got lots of nice, colourful stuff around the church, and we've got some nice people in colourful outfits, mainly Ash and Alan. Come on, Ash, stand up. Mate. Stand up. Stand up. Look at I mean, come on. You know, it's not great when the dads make more of an effort than the, the young people, is it? But they look great. I love it. I love it. So, we got this colourful stuff up because it's a youth service. Are you excited about a youth service? And we have got a bit of a festival theme going on this morning, but we'll talk more about that later. So, I'll leave you hanging in anticipation about what that's about. Cool. So, a few announcements for what's coming up over the next week and beyond. Tonight, we have put the kettle on at 6.30 at either Francis's house Francis, can you put your hand up? He's busy. Everyone knows who Francis is. So Francis' house in Burnham, or with Dave and Carmen. Oh, yeah, Carmen's at the back. In Clevedon, that's at half six. If you need the address, please go and see them or speak to Dawn, and she can give you the address that you need. Okay, Monday morning, tomorrow morning, we are continuing. It's the last week, I think, of our God conversations where some people gather at church, they go for a walk, and they just ask the Lord to show them people to talk to and have an interaction with. So tomorrow, that is at 9.30, outside the church we're meeting. So we really encourage you, if you're not working, if you're free, to come along and just, yeah, be blessed and go for a nice walk. Okay, almost, we're getting there. Tonight, there's no open house. Instead, the young people at Locking Castle, we're going to have a, well, we're not having a worship. There's a worship night happening at Locking Castle Church at half six. We don't know when it finishes, we don't really know what it is, but we're going to go. Eight o'clock it finishes, Eloise knows, eight o'clock. So we're going to meet outside at 6.15. If your young person wants to come, then that would be great. We'll have a good time. So no open house, we're meeting at Locking Castle, 6.15 instead. Okay, we're going to watch a video now. It's a little promo for Holiday Club. So look at the screen. Gonna start again with the sound. <laughs> ah, Scottish people are much better. Ah, yes, they are. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay. We'll maybe see you at the end. We are going, so Holiday Club is coming up. What date is the Holiday Club? 24th of July. 
So, spaces are limited. I want to really encourage you, if you have a young person, to get booked in. If you know another family who doesn't come to the church, who have young people, it's going to be great. We have had loads of holiday clubs in the past. They've always went really well, and it's going to be a really, really good week. And, oh, we've got sound. Let's watch it, because it explains it better than me. We've been working really hard. I think we deserve a break. You're right. We should go to the beach. That's a great idea, but we can't go like this. We've got to get ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Great, let's go. What a lovely day! Let's find somewhere to sit. Look at all this rubbish! We should probably clean that up. Okay, good idea. Who did that? <laughs> oh, wee, 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 wee. Oh. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, oh, oh. Shouldn't we be throwing this rubbish in the bin, Mr. Oh, oh you imbecile. We are here on a mission. The mission is to destroy Western with garbage. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? We're never going to manage to clean this up on our own. Oh, we're just going to have to have the kids from Holiday Club to help us. So we have our Summer Holiday Club coming up so soon. It's the 24th to the 28th of July and it is for any child in year 1 to 6. It's going to start every day at 10 till half 12 and it's the Holy Trinity Church. It's going to have lots of fun and games, craft activities, there's points, there's scoreboards, there's a load of things. It's going to be great fun. But more importantly, we are going to capture whoever is making all this mess. You They're will never, never win. You will never win. I don't like children. So we only have limited spaces. So book your place at our events page on our website and we will see you there. Wow. I mean... If you don't want to come for the games and the fun, surely you want to know the really secret identity of Waterbomb Biology. I wonder who it could be. So, Holiday Club is the 24th to the 28th. Like I said, there's limited spaces, so please book in if you plan on coming. It's going to be really, really good. And then on the Sunday, so that'll be the 30th of July, we'll have a family service just to sort of have some more fun. And also after the service, back by popular demand, we'll have another bring and share lunch. So, Francis, if you want to bring food, if you want to come, please see Francis and he'll coordinate that because he's really, really great at coordinating stuff. Okay, we're going to have a game because it's a youth service and we love to have fun. So I'm going to ask Freya and Rachel to come up. Give them a wee big cheer. Oh, she's there. Hi, everyone. Um, so we're going to lead your game today. Okay, so we're going to split the room in half, so we're just going to go right down the middle there. Yeah, so the aim of the game is we're going to have a ball on this side and then we're going to add another ball in. But you don't want the ball on your side, so you've got to work together to hit it to the opposite side. And if the music's going to play, and when it stops, if it's on your side, then the other team gets a point. Okay, and then it's the first team to get to five points is the winner. And then we'll add another ball in to make it harder. Okay. On this side. So this team get the point. Okay, let's go again. Oh, and another 
point to this side. Okay, let's add in two balls. You ready? Go. Go. each team so this team's on three points and this team's on one point okay let's carry on going God, I just wanna be with you all. We're done. Thank you very much. Just fine, we'll keep it on. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know what they were going to do, so it's fine. Well done. Thank you, Rachel and Freya. <laughs> cool. So I'm just going to invite Rosie up just now. So give Rosie a big cheer. Thank you. So before we, start, um, before we start our time of worship this morning, I've asked Rosie if she would come up and share a little bit of her testimony, um, a little bit about how she met Jesus, what her life is like now with Jesus. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited to hear. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. So question number one, tell us what you thought about church, about Christianity before you knew Jesus for yourself. I wouldn't go to church and my parents found it very painful to get me out the door every day. Uh, I would sit in the corner and sulk. I wouldn't talk to anyone because I had no friends. I wouldn't stand up and worship. I would just sit there and I wouldn't say anything. And I would sulk because I didn't want to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, my next question then. When did you encounter Jesus for yourself? What uh, happened? Personally, it was uh, my first time at Limitless, and I remember Tim uh, saying that if you want to encounter Jesus, you can come to the front. For the first few nights, I was too nervous to go, and I remember him saying, you, uh, you can ask if you want to see youth leaders if they'll pray for you. So I remember poking my hand up and Sean coming over and praying for me, and then all, uh, closing my eyes and all the other hands coming. And uh, uh, at first, I thought nothing was happening, and then I felt a light, and God saying, oh, I'm with you, take some time, just be with me. And uh, I remember my eyes getting teary and they're falling on the ground. And um, as it, they started to worship again, I remember opening my eyes and seeing Abby and Sean there, and I hugged them. Amazing. That's so good. I know. Praise God. <laughs> and then, so my final question is what changes did you see in your life after you gave your life to Jesus? Uh, I would start wanting to come to church and I would stand up and worship and put my hands up as I'm surrendering to the Lord and uh, I would like to spread the word with my friends and tell them all about it and then I've started bringing my friends to youth and my friend Evie wants to come to Limitless so I hope she can encounter Jesus as well. Amazing! Amazing. So good! No, thank you. It just goes to show that Jesus can meet with anyone. It doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter how old we are, we just need to be willing to meet him. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I'm going to invite Connor back just now and rule in the worship band, and we're going to spend some time in worship. Okay, come on, mate. So Rule's going to read for us this morning with the worship band. Just get ready. I will exalt you, your Lord, for you have lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, you Lord, brought me up from the realm of the, de of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. 
Sing, sing of praises of the, of the Lord. You, his faithful, praise his holy name. For his ain- anger lasts over a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, and, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I shall never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I'm silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? I will proclaim your faithfulness. Hear, hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed with me with joy. That, that, my, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Why don't we stand this morning, church, if you are able to, and we just pray as we come into the time to praise God and worship Him. Lord, we thank you for your amazing love for us this morning. We thank you for your grace, Lord, and your mercy. We thank you that you change lives, Jesus. We thank you for every changed life in this church this morning, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There's a song that stirs the spirit And it calls the heart to life It's an anthem in the making Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generations Getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter Singing out into the night It's our time to be silent Don't you dare hide your light There's a world outside your window So don't let it pass you by Lift your hands to the heavens Lift your voice to the sky Praise the Lord of 
Now, this is what the Lord says. He who who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. God is the God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. He is way maker. And I just feel like there's some people here this morning who are in a situation where they need God to make a way for them. They need God to show up in their lives. And God always shows up because God is faithful. He is your saviour, your creator, your God and your king. If anyone here this morning is in that situation where they just need Jesus. We all need Jesus. But something specific in your mind this morning and you need Jesus. I'm going to ask that you come to the front just as the band play through a song for us again and receive prayer because God wants to meet you where you are, church. God wants to show up in your life and shower you with his love and his grace and his mercy. So as the band pray, and if you feel to respond to that, please just come forward and someone will, will pray for you this morning.
We thank you that you're a God who shows up in our weakness and our times of trouble, Lord. We thank you that you are God, that you love us so much. You are amazing, Jesus. If you're being prayed for, then just continue with that. That's, that's fine. We're just going to thank the band for, for leading us in worship so, so brilliantly. <laughs> and next this morning, we're going to have one of our, our young people come in and share a, a little devotion with us. Uh, Freya is going to come up, and I'm sure you'll, you'll make her feel encouraged and welcome as she does. I'll just give her a minute to, to get ready. But why don't, we, why don't we just pray for her as she prepares herself. Lord, we thank you for Freya. We thank you for what you've put on her heart this morning. And we just pray that you would speak through her and you would give us ears to hear whatever it is you want to say to us through her this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, Christy has asked me to share with you what I've been doing in my Bible study recently, and I'd like to share what God has been teaching me on trusting Him during times of change. So recently, I've been going through a season of change. For example, I've finished secondary school, um, I've been deciding what career path I want to pursue, I've been deciding which sixth form or college I want to go to. I've been choosing what subjects I want to study and also choosing what hobbies I want to put my time into. <laughs> so change is defined as to make, alter or modify something and we all face and experience change in our lives every single day. Change can be good but as humans we seem to struggle with it and see it as a negative thing. In these times of change, we can take our eyes off Jesus and rely on our own knowledge, strength, and desires to get us through and make tough decisions. In my season of change, I've struggled to be directed by God, but have held tightly onto this Bible verse, which is Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. This verse has taught me and reminded me that in times of change, we may not see God at work, but he is always there. And although it might seem scary, he is working in our lives to create plans that are the best for us and his glory. I'd like to finish with a prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today asking for guidance. We can feel lost and overwhelmed by circumstances, and we need your help in finding our way. Please open our eyes and heart to the direction you want us to take. Help us to make wise decisions that will lead us closer to your path for our lives. Amen. Amazing. Thank you, Freya. It was great. Really encouraging. So we're going to watch a video now, a video all about Limitless Festival and what great times our young people have. So yeah, we'll, we'll watch that. What do you love about Limitless Festival? The thing I love about Limitless Festival is like all the worship and just hanging out with my friends. Uh, I like Limitless Festival. It's just a good, good vibe and like learning about Jesus and good music and. Do you know you got a sleeping mask on your face? Yeah. I love the encounter night. Um, everyone just stays in for worship um, for ages, and I just really enjoy being in God's presence with everyone and listening to all the different speakers and hearing their stories are really encouraging. What do you love about Limitless Festival? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? Oh, it's just the best. It's just quite.
quite good, isn't it? <laughs> I would put that in this. It's good. It's just quite good. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Sa uh, Sarah's cooking's pretty great. Yeah. Why do you love Limitless Festival? Do you know what? The Holy Spirit just moves. It's so good. Amen. See you there. Um, it's fun. I can worship around other people who are Christians. And so it's a nice fellowship. And got like a good conga. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love Limitless Festival because you get to worship God with other people who um, have the same ideas as you and also the Sydney side. It's awesome. <gasps> what do you love about Limitless Festival? <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> the thing I love about Limitless Festival is going there with my friends and spending time with God. It's such good fun and I enjoy it so much. I don't really have a specific favourite thing about it. It's just boring. Good. I get to hang out with my friends on the water fights pretty much every day. I like the preachers and that like everyone's singing along and it's like really fun just to listen out to everyone. Why do you love Limitless Festival? I love Limitless Festival because it brings those of Christians together and it makes us make new friends and it's just an amazing thing to go to. What do you love about Limitless Festival? Nothing, because I've never been. Oh. <laughs> Why do you love Limitless Festival? Because I get to play football with my friend. Um, personally, I like my favourite part was the talks um, in the morning and evening and the worship and like feeling like a family. And you felt like you knew everyone there and God was really there. <laughs> Another side of disco. Do you want me to go with you? Because it's fun. You meet God. You mess around. You go to silent discos, which are great. But more importantly, you meet God. You go camping. Camping? Yeah. And you go to silent discos. Nice. And I love it because we see thousands of young people together worshipping Jesus. Why, why would you not want to invest in young people getting to experience such a great week, such a great week together? We've heard from Rosie this morning already that she met God at Limitless. We've heard from the video that people have so much fun. They have a great time. They can worship God. They can encounter God. To new things every day Television, videos Yo, what can I say? Shopping till they dropping Hawking at the mall Yakking, yakking on the phone Yo, who else should they call? But I stay With the man who made the blindness see Living large and super charm He did something in me Check it out It's about a total change of mind Don't wait too late Stand strong, stay loud, stay long, bust the devil in love and pieces, get alive with God, addicted to Jesus.
So, uh, yeah, why would you not want to invest in young people to go to Limitless? Because it's just as fun as that. But on a serious note, we like to try and make the cost of Limitless as low as we can so as many young people can come as possible. And that means that we've got some money that we would like to raise and that's why we, that's not why we do your service, but that's kind of why we do your service. It's kind of why we bring cake. So there's going to be cakes after the service. It's not like 50 people cake, but we'd love if you could just give at the generosity of your heart. Whatever you feel you can or are able to or want to after the service. If you don't have cash, that's fine, because at the giving station you can give online. Just make sure you put on there, Limitless Youth, so we know that it's for us. Yeah? Okay. Next we're going to have another two amazing young people come up and bless us with their talents and with stuff that they, they love to do. So I'm going to invite Rosie and Evelyn up. So give them a round of applause as they come up.
everyone been great this morning let's give our young people another round of applause thank you well done guys so um i actually had no clue what i was going to preach on this morning usually if i'm asked to preach i've got kind of some rough idea but not this time so oh I set aside an afternoon to go to coffee number one to write my sermon. Now, if you're ever looking for a pastor and we're not in church, we're at coffee number one. <laughs> I've just exposed a hiding spot. No, I'm joking. But that's where I went to start writing the sermon. And I go up to the till and I'm praying as I'm ordering, um, like, God, I'm about to sit down. I'm about to write the sermon. I have no idea what I'm going to speak on. Could you tell me what you want me to speak on? And I got no response and I was like that's fine God like in your perfect timing but soon would be great because I need to write this sermon so um I ordered my my drink and my cinnamon bun and I go to my table and I put down my laptop and as soon as my bum hits the chair the words Mary Magdalene come into my head now I know a little bit about Mary Magdalene and um, maybe you do too but she's not someone that I'd ever studied an awful lot in great depth so I'm like right she must be in the Gospels. I get out my Bible and I go to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And I try to find Mary Magdalene in the pages. And I've read the Gospel many times in my life. I've read those books many times. But when I read those passages that day, it was as if I was reading them with fresh eyes. It was as if I'd never read them before. Like sometimes, for example, I watch a really good TV series and it's so good that at the end of it, I actually think I wish I hadn't watched it so I can watch it again for the first time with fresh eyes. And it's just like that with the Word of God. It's alive and it's active and the God of the universe can speak to you through it just as if he's speaking to you for the very first time. And sometimes if I don't, I go through seasons in my life where I don't read as much or I end up reading out of obligation. And then at the end, I get a wake up call. Like, why am I being like this? This is a privilege. I get to speak and meet with the living God. You open it and you have an encounter with him. And Mary Magdalene is a perfect example of someone who knew what it's like not just to meet Jesus, not just to have a one-off encounter with Jesus, but she knows what it's like to give up everything and follow him. She knows what it's like to be devoted to her Savior. And so today, very quickly, I'm going to split Mary's life into three sections, just like Rosie did at the start. Her life before she knew Jesus, her life following Jesus, and her life after Jesus rose from the dead. So number one, life before Jesus. Now, there's no account of Mary actually meeting Jesus in the Bible. But we know from Luke chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, what her life was like before Jesus. It says this, it says, Soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them was Mary Magdalene, whom he had cast out seven demons. So we've got Mary. She's been previously demon-possessed. Now she's been healed by Jesus, and she's touring around the land with him as he preaches. And to me, this is amazing. Let's think about it for a second. She already would have been looked down on because women in that culture, they had very little to no place. In the Old Testament, we see God use women mightily for, for him, but then somewhere down the line... And practices were enforced that went beyond the biblical norm. For example, from the research that I've done, women during Mary's time were shunned in public. Women were not allowed to join in the public worship in the synagogue. They were restricted to spectating. A woman wasn't allowed to give evidence in court because she was seen as unreliable. She wasn't allowed to touch the scriptures in case she defiled them. Imagine. So with that in mind, we've got Mary, A, a woman, B, not a great history. She didn't have much going for her. Yet Jesus saw her. He looked at her and he found love towards her. He healed her. Hello, Rich. And he saw her. Standard, isn't it? For the youth service. <laughs> and I'm reminded of another woman in the Bible called Hagar. And Hagar, she had a rough life. We're not going to go into it. You can read it in Genesis. But at the end, the Bible says, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord. She said, you are the God who sees me. 
And I can imagine similar thoughts would have went through Mary Magdalene's head when she met Jesus. She was seen as the lowest of the low by society. Yet Jesus saw her. He had compassion on her and he healed her. And now Mary had a choice to make. She could choose after she got healed to go back to her home, back to her family, back to her society, and just quietly get on with her life. But for Mary, that was no option because she'd met and encountered with the living God who gave her a new life. So her only logical response was to devote her life to Jesus, and that's what she'd done. Me and Rachel met up the other week because we're doing discipleship together. And one of the sessions we did was to write out our testimonies. Now, we're both from Christian families. To your surprise, neither Rachel or I have ever been in jail. Um, We've never murdered anyone, never been drug dealers. So dare I say it, during our session, we were tempted to say that our testimonies were slightly boring. Not much going on there. But anyway, we were like, well, we'll just do it. We took 10 minutes. We reflected on our lives before we followed Jesus and when we encountered Jesus and what our lives look like now. And then we shared them with each other, and we were like, wow, God has done so much for us. Look, he was right here when this happened. He held my hand when I was on my own. He picked me up when I was down. He's been there the whole time. He's my friend when I had no one, and we could say with confidence, oh, my goodness, he sees me. He's the God who sees us. He knows us and he took us as we were into his loving, fatherly embrace. And I would encourage you to do the same at some point. Go home, write down your testimony. It doesn't take long. Well, it didn't take us long. (laughs) It doesn't take long. But write it down afresh. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Reflecting on where you've been shows that where God has been as well. His hand has been on your life all the way through it. He puts everything into perspective. And Mary realized that. And she gave her life to him because of it. So with that in mind, we'll move to point two, our life with Jesus. From the day she was set free by Jesus, her life was forever changed. She didn't go back to where she was before. She became a devoted and loyal follower of Jesus. She learned from him, which again was against the norm. Women didn't learn much in those days. But she supported him practically, financially. And it's clear that she would have done anything for him because she loved him so much. And it reminds me of Connor and his love for our son, Murray. Connor's such a good dad. He goes beyond uh, what, what a dad needs to do. He goes over and above it. And what Connor loves to do is he loves to make Murray laugh. Baby giggles are just the cutest thing. And he'll do anything to make Murray laugh, even if it makes him look stupid. And I have asked him if I could share this. And um, one particular time that stands out to me, and the youth will remember because they've seen it, um, but Murray has this, like, suction cup toy thing, and it spins. And it's good. You stick it to the bath, you stick it to the table in restaurants, and he spins it, and he plays with it, and keeps him entertained. And one morning, I was up getting ready upstairs, and I heard Murray laughing so loud downstairs. And I came down, and I was like, Connor, what's he laughing at? And then I saw it. Connor had stuck the sticky thing to his forehead and Murray was like hitting it and it was making him laugh and that was fine. But the only problem was, and I think Kirsty has a photo, when Connor took it off, it left that on his head. (laughs) And that mark was stuck to Connor's head for a solid seven days. He had to go to work. He works in a school full of teenagers. So that wasn't his best week. He was bullied a lot by... um, students and staff and me. Um, But after it faded, after it faded, he said, you know what, I would do it again. And I was like, please don't. But he was like, I would do it again because it made Murray laugh. So it was worth it. He would do anything for him. And that love and devotion is amplified even more in Mary Magdalene and her love and her devotion to Jesus. She left everything she'd ever known, her land, her home, her family to follow the Lord. Because when you give your life to the Lord, you're forever changed. And I shared this analogy at the Bible study I led a few weeks ago. I used to be a runner. I can hardly believe it myself, but I used to be a runner. And one time I was training to do a half marathon. And when you're training to do a half marathon, your runs get quite long. Your training gets quite intense. And it was building up to the run. So I was running pretty much every day. And I would come back from a run soaked, like sweaty, disgusting, And um, I would often run out of running clothes because I would go through them so fast. At that point, I still lived at home. 
And we had a laundry fairy there, so I would just put the clothes in the basket, and then a few days later, they would appear on my bed, folded. We don't have that in my house anymore, but I had it when I lived at home. And so I would go for runs, and a few times I would get home, and I would think, smell myself, I don't think I smell that bad. I'll, I'll just, I can get another wear out of these clothes. So I'd put them on the ground, and I would get in the shower, and then I'd get out, I'd get dried, I'd get dressed, and I would pick the clothes back up to put them back in the wardrobe. And the smell that came off those clothes would bring me to tears. It was absolutely humming. And I would think, what the heck? These didn't smell that bad a few minutes ago when I took them off. But the truth is, they did stink. I just didn't realize it because I stunk as well. I only noticed the smell when I became clean. And after I became clean, I can guarantee you I wouldn't be putting those clothes back on my body. And it's like that when we come to Jesus, when we come to know the Lord. See, we're all born sinners. And I'm quickly realizing with a one-year-old, you don't have to teach a child to do something naughty. It's just in our nature. And when we come to know Jesus, it's like he washes you clean of all your sin, all of the bad stuff in our lives, all of the things that makes you feel rubbish and weighs you down with fear and anger and anxiety. And you might have been so used to feeling that way. You might have been so used to doing that stuff. It's just things that make you feel, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't said that, thought that. But when you come to know Jesus, he washes you clean. And these things become disgusting to us. We should come across these things and go, pooey, as I say when I change Murray's nappy. That's gross. No thanks. I'm not doing that anymore. Why would I want to put sweaty, muddy clothes on after I come out of the shower? So here she is, Mary. She's got a past, but now after Jesus miraculously came into her life, she's not going back to where she came from. She's not putting on sweaty clothes again after she's been given a fresh start. She's pressing on forward in a relationship with Jesus. She's, she's touring around with him. She's like a sponge soaking up all that he does, watching him, learning from him. It's like a parent teaching a child. And I see this with Murray now all the time. He copies everything, the good and the bad. For example, I was challenged recently about how much I was on my phone in front of him. It was his birthday week, um, and I gave him some cake after he ate his dinner, and it was, do you know those like Mr. Kipling rectangly things? And I put it down on the tray for him, and he picked it up and put it to his ear. He didn't know that you were to eat it. He was trying to talk into it because he sees me on my phone. Maybe stop doing that. But that's what Mary was doing with Jesus. She was watching him, learning from him, soaking up all that he was doing. And we can do that with Jesus too. It's not just for Mary. How can we do that? We can't see him. But you can know him. You know him by reading his word, by spending time in prayer with him. How often do I say it? The more time you spend with someone, the more you become like them. And I used to say that and use that example with Connor. We became like each other, started dressing like each other. But now it's got to the point where it's the same with me and Maddie. We've got the same coat, the same trainers, the same socks, the same hair. We've got, because we spend time with each other and who you spend time with, you rub off on. And it's like that the more time you spend with Jesus. Mary knew the reality of that. She knew Jesus. He's the one who sees her and knows her and calls her friend. Which brings me to the last point. She had a life devoted to Jesus. And yes, she followed him around for a while. But her devotion becomes so clear in Jesus' death and resurrection. And this is a section that really moved me in coffee number one. Matthew 26 speaks of the betrayal and arrest of Jesus before his crucifixion. And to summarize, Judas, who was Jesus' close friend, had just betrayed Jesus. He'd handed him over to the Roman soldiers to be killed. And in verse 56, it says, at that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. These men had spent the last three years with Jesus, traveling with him, seeing him perform signs and wonders. And when it got tough, when it got scary, when push come to shove, they deserted him and fled. But before we go any further, let's give these men the credit that they're due. This isn't Mary good, disciples bad, absolutely not. These men went on to be anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. They went on to preach the gospel to the nations and the majority of them ended up dying for Jesus. But in this moment here, Fear got the better of them, as it does to all of us at some point, and they ran away. So what about Mary? Where is she? She was last at the cross and first at the tomb. 
In John 19, 25, it says, Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Mary was in her darkest hour, Jesus was there. And when Jesus was in his darkest hour, Mary was there. She wasn't going anywhere. She had experienced the love of the Lord, and that was enough for her to stay, even through the fear, even through seeing Jesus in pain. She stayed because she was completely devoted to him. And then he died. He took the sins of the world on himself so that we can have a relationship with him. And he was laid in a tomb. And a few days later, you can read it in full in John 20, verse 1 to 10. I'll read the start. It says, early on Sunday morning, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. She found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple. And she said, they've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and I don't know where they've put him. And to paraphrase the next section, Peter, the other disciple, they have a look. They go, yep, you're right. He's not there. And they go home. So what about Mary? Did she go home? Well, let's read it in verse, starting from verse 11. It says, Mary was standing outside the tomb. Try and picture it. Crying. As she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and one at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've put him. And she turned to leave and she saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you've taken him away, please tell me where you've put him and I'll go get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher, Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. Go and find my brothers. Tell them I am ascending to my God, to your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and she told them, I've seen the Lord. And then she gave them his message. There's so much we can take from that passage, but I'll just take one thing. Um, Why did Mary see the angels and then the Lord and not the disciples? Well, the obvious reason I could see from the text is because she stuck around. Mary sat with her tears long enough to peer inside the tomb and see something that the disciples hadn't saw. Angels, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where he is. And from this, I see that she was just distraught without Jesus. She couldn't function without him. This man who had become everything to her was now gone and she didn't know where he was. And she was in deep grief. Last year, I dropped my phone and the screen cracked. It was completely broken, couldn't use it. And this was on the Saturday night. And so Sunday morning, straight after church, I couldn't go before church, that was a bit. So I went straight after church, down into town. I found a shop that could fix my screen. And I asked him, I said, how long is it going to take? And he said, it's going to take an hour. I said, that's fine, I can kill an hour. What can I do? I can find Connor, we can go for a walk. I need to get some things from Tesco. And then I'll come back and hopefully it'll be done. So um, I left the the phone shop. And I started walking and 30 seconds after I left the shop, I had my first moment of, oh, where's my phone? It's in the shop. And that was the first mini moment of panic out of many moments of panic because I've been so used to having my phone in my pocket 24-7. When it wasn't there, it felt weird. And I kept thinking I'd lost it. So I was thinking, right, let me phone Connor and I'll see where I can meet him. We can go to the shopping together. And I go to get out my phone I realized I can't phone Connor, the phone's in the shop, and so I can't meet up with him. I'm like, how on earth do people do this in the olden days? Did you just have to, like, make plans and just expect they would turn up? Like, that's so inconvenient. But I was like, right, I'll just, I can't, I can't meet Connor. I'll just go to Tesco. So I went to Tesco, and I put all my stuff on the conveyor belt, and I got to the till, and, and the women scanned it all. And then I realized I couldn't pay for it because I no longer carry cash. I no longer carry a bank card. I just like, boop, and it does it. And I was like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to cancel them. I don't know where my phone is. So I left Tesco and I was like, right, maybe that's been an hour. Let me check the time. And I go to check the time on my phone and my phone's in the shop and I don't have a watch because who wears a watch? And I'd watched Bear Grylls a couple of times, but I wasn't confident enough to like tell the time by the sun, but it did cross my mind. And I was like, I can't do it. I need to go back to the shop. I was a bit early, so I just waited. And I was like, please, Lord, would you get my phone back? And it got it back, and it was fine. What a tragic hour. (laughs) 
Oh. I'm going to invite the band up just now. I've just got a couple more things to say. I was walking home after this clearly very tragic first world problem, and a thought dropped into my head. And I don't know if it was God or just a thought, or it doesn't really matter, but it challenged me, and it still challenges me because I still think about it. And the thought was, what would my life look like if I treated God the way I treated my phone? I want to be able to not function properly for an hour without God. I don't want to go a minute anymore without Him crossing my mind. I want him to have an impact on every single moment of every single day of my life. I want him to have an impact on every decision I make, whether it's big or small. Now, this would never happen, but I want to live a life that if Jesus was taken out of it, I wouldn't be able to physically go on. And this is what Mary reminds me of here. My Lord is gone. I've seen him die. I've seen him go in the tomb, and now he's gone. Where is he? And then there he is, right in front of her. And we're told he doesn't, she doesn't recognize him. And I don't know why that is. Maybe he looked different after he rose from the dead. Maybe he made it so she wouldn't be able to recognize him. I'm really not sure. Ask Steve if you really want to know. But the turning point was when he said her name. Mary. Just one word and she knew. She knew it was him. And he had risen from the dead. And today, Jesus calls you by name. He's the God who sees you. He's the God who knows you. Whether you've known him 50 years or whether you don't know him at all, whether you're on top of the world or in the deepest, darkest pit of despair, he sees you, he knows you, he calls you by name, and he loves you. And so she's the first to witness this resurrection. And then in in the book of Matthew, the book of John, Jesus commissions her and she's the first to go and spread this gospel. She's the first to preach the good news. Again, revolutionary. In those days, women were encouraged to speak, let alone provide reliable witnesses. But here, Jesus chooses her. And throughout the Bible, he chooses the ones who are the least likely. And that's good news for us because I was going to be kind and say, I'm nothing special, but we're nothing special. But that's good because Jesus doesn't use special people. He uses ordinary people. So what's my conclusion? It's simple. It's one line. Mary's life was radically used by God. And the reason for this wasn't how wonderful she was. It was how willing she was. Jesus met with her. She was changed by him. She made the choice to live out the rest of her days with him. And you can too, and it's an immense joy, it's an immense privilege to live out your days for him, and your life will never be the same. So I'm going to ask us to stand, and Phoebe is going to lead us in a song now. We're going to sing Spirit Break Out, because we need a revival in our land. We need followers of Jesus who aren't going to be lukewarm and complacent about the gospel. We need followers of Jesus who are going to be radically devoted to him. So we're going to sing this to God with every breath in our lungs. Jesus, may your spirit break out across Weston. May your spirit break out across the UK. May you start right here with us, Jesus. We say, Lord, our hands are willing, our hearts are willing. Would you use us to glorify your holy and mighty name, Lord? We ask this in your name, Father. Amen.
spirit break out. Isn't it great to be led by a generation that's saying spirit break out? Isn't it great to be led by so many young people who are so vivacious and alive, who have a heart just to say, culture is going that way, but we're going this way. I love that. But that's not an easy path. That's the path of a radical. That's the path of an individual that simply says, I choose. I choose the way of Jesus. I choose the pathway. Jeremiah said, ask for the ancient paths. That's the good way. And I would implore and just commend and say thank you to our young people for choosing the good path. May God give them strength day by day to continue on the good path. It's a path that is not easy, but we thank every one of them. And we will do that in a moment. We're going to applaud them. We're going to stand with them. And we're going to say thank you to them. But each one of us has a part to play in this. You know, we want to get as many to limitless. You know, it's not about an event, but we want to invest. We've invested heavily as a church. We will continue to invest, you know, uh, with regards to finance. Uh, and, and it's just a very practical way. So I'd like you to be very extravagant. If you can pay £3.50 for a Victoria sponge at Costa, let's just try and do that for a day here. If you can pay that for a cake and you want to go wild and actually pay more than that, then that's absolutely fine. If you've got no money at all today, you can put an IOU into the giving station. Well, you can give money then, pay it next week, uh, and that's fine. Or you can give online and, uh, you know, as part of our normal giving, you know, that, 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 that would be appropriate to do. I'm just immensely proud of every one of our young people. And I now want to say, let's applaud them. Wow. 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 More. Yes, Lord, we give you thanks. Yes. Wow. We are so proud of you all. Anyone under 18, we're proud of everyone, but anyone under 18, we just want to say we are uh, just so thrilled of what you've uh, done today. Whatever part you've taken place, uh, what you've done here today, we want to say it's enormously well received and thank you. You are valued and loved. And uh, some people say to me, it's great. Isn't it great that that just happened? It doesn't just happen. Lots of time and energy from a lot of you guys, but those who are working with the youth make that happen. And there's a big youth team. And one of the, I love the rapper that is kind of like, you know, the man Piggott, uh, you know, <laughs> what a rapper, you know. Uh, but every Thursday night, every other night, all these holidays, they go on all investment, investment. You know, what a team. I'd like to give a round of applause for our team. Wow. Wow. We've had an amazing time this morning and, you know, and the, the, the guys are going to help us at the back by serving, I'm sure, and giving out the cakes and be generous as you do that. Just a couple of practical things to say that there is an Alpha course a little bit later. So if you've come normally to do Alpha, Alpha course is on about 12.30. Uh, and also there is no prayer meeting tonight, just so that you're aware. We want you to go to, to some of the venues at Carmen's and uh, Francis's house, you know, so that you can have fellowship there. So there's no prayer meeting uh, tonight. So Make sure you tell a young person, well done. Give them a high five. Don't shake their hand, you know, uh, and do something positive. But uh, let's just pray as we commit and, uh, uh, and uh, thank God for all that he's done this morning. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for every single one of our fabulous, brilliant young people. They are valued and they are a gift that you have given to us. And we want, Lord, not only to look after them, we want to see them thrive and go way beyond where we could ever imagine going ourselves. Lord, we want them, Lord, to be rooted, and we want them to continue, Lord, to simply be in love with you, and that's it. And so as they prepare, Lord, for new seasons in college and at universities and at new years as they go up, Lord, give them boldness and courage, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that you are the God who is with them, and if you are with them, all things are possible. 
Thank you for testimonies and songs and gifts and talents, Lord. Extend them, Lord, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for many who are involved in our youth, Lord. We thank you for Christian Connor, but there are so many as well, Lord. We honor them for their dedication and hard work, Lord, both in HT Kids and in Messy Church. We honor everyone who is involved. And now we just want to commit everything to you and say, Jesus, be honored and glorified this day in all things. We ask and pray in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen. Let's give a round of applause. Woo, woo, woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Stay for tea and coffee and cakes and checks are accepted, made payable to Western Elim Church. Okay, God bless you. Amen, amen.
Zlatý 